Who are you? Hi, my name is Tilly Lockie. I am the Bionic Girl and I'm 13 years old and I'm working to make prosthetics and disabilities cool and fashionable. And I'm Adam Lockie, Tilly's dad, going around helping her being a, a, a dad chaperone. <laughs> Tilly, you are a part-time makeup artist or would-be makeup artist. You're a model. You're also a citizen scientist working with Open Bionics. Can you take us through that? So basically what I do is Open Bionics will send me the new updates and different things that they've added to the hand and then they'll send it off to me and then I will test them out and then I'll give them really honest feedback to make them the best they could possibly be. And I am starting to do my makeup a lot with them too, starting to do my makeup with the Bionic hands which was a bit tricky at first because I don't remember ever having hands. So it was kind of hard for me to learn how to pick certain objects off. Up, I would have to sort of study how my friends or my sisters would pick things up and try and mimic that. And meanwhile, still do it. I do it like a couple of photo shoots at least once a week. So that's fun too. Adam, can you take us uh, through the history of how this all happened? Yeah, um, Tilly was born a perfectly healthy, happy baby um, on the 7th of October. Yeah, and um, she fell just after Christmas, fell really, really ill. Um, Mum had to check it out and see what's going on. And we were originally diagnosed with an ear infection. Um, but my wife, Sarah, and Tilly's mum, was still a bit unsure. She was like, she wasn't getting any better. And I was at work, so this is, you know, it's all hearsay for me. So I was lucky I didn't get to see any of this happen. But she gradually got worse and worse until eventually, um, yeah, she was diagnosed with meningitis, meningococcal septicemia strain B, of which there was no vaccine back then. Um, luckily for us, the rash appeared, because if we hadn't seen the rash, then we maybe never would have got to the hospital on time. It was really touch and go. And to quote the doctor, they said, she is at the sicker end of the scale, um, which was really scary. It was the first time we thought, wow, you know, this is life or death, this. But luckily she survived, she's still with us today, um, at the loss of her hands only. So, you know, when people say, well, how did you feel when she had to lose her hands? Like, well, that was nothing compared to what it could have been. So that's how the story began. And we've gone ever since from 15 months, trialing out these bionic hands and ch changing companies and trying improvements and upgrades and letting the world know and spreading awareness. So you already had the bionic hands through Open Bionics, but then you ended up with an incredibly souped up version of them, Tilly. Can you tell us how that happened? So these hands here are inspired by the movie Elite Battle Angel. I don't know if anyone's seen it. If you haven't, I definitely recommend you will get the DVD. Because I've seen it like five times now and I'm a little bit obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, these hands here are inspired by yeah. the other girl who has, it's, they call it the Berserker body in the film. So this is like the Berserker arm and it's super cool. And so these were presented to me at the world premiere of the movie in London, which I had no idea about. I knew I was going to London to get a new pair of hands because my other hands I had grown out of, but I thought they were just going to be white like my other pair. I didn't have any idea about the premiere or that they were even inspired by Leah to the point where they were actually like, when they were trying it on on me, they blindfolded me, so I didn't really know what was going on. And then that was until I went in the next room, thinking we were doing a little bit of a photo shoot. And then there were about 15 cameras waiting in my face and John Lando and James Cameron stood with my hands and these hands in the box with Sammy Payne, the co-owner of Open Bionics. And I was just shocked really. I didn't really know how to react. And then I got to go to the premiere, which was amazing. I was shaking of excitement. I was so happy. And you have been featured in many of the world's media. You've been globe trotting either with your mum or your dad, depending on their time schedules. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. So I have done quite a lot, especially recently. It's really blown up a bit. Yeah. We've literally just got back from Lithuania a couple of days ago. So that was really fun. It was my first ever time there. So that was really cool. Um, I go to places like Amsterdam in Canada where I speak on panels about possibilities and what we can do for our future, how we can help. And I've been to San Diego Comic Con where I spoke on a panel that was incredible. Never thought I'd ever get the opportunity to go there. And so I've been doing little things like that. Well, not really little things, big mm. things like that. Bearing in mind, I'm only 13. And I also got to do a catwalk in the White House. And I'm in five different countries before the new year. So it's pretty busy, pretty hectic, but a lot of fun. You're getting a lot of attention yourself and you now have a funding campaign because, of course, as you grow up, you'll, you'll need other hands. So you've had a, a lot of help from famous celebrities, scientists, open bionics. 
people who have really reached out to you and helped you in a really generous way, Tilly. But you're not just taking, you're also helping many, many other people, especially other kids suffering with the same things or not suffering, they have the same challenges as you have. Could you please talk to us about that? Well, I do know lots of people like me with disabilities or with limb difference. Disabilities are maybe not related to mine in the slightest, but they feel some way connected. And that's why I think social media is a, plays a big part in how people can reach out to me. And it's, I'm open to everyone, people with questions, people who are interested in science, technology, people who have a limb difference, people who want to be inspired, or people just that just want to follow my journey. Everyone's welcome, and I try and get back to as many people as possible. I'm also um, ambassador for Meningitis Now, which is, which is a charity that I really... Um, agree with their values as soon as they hear somebody needs help they'll be they'll stop and drop everything and be at the door with welcome open arms and I just feel like that's so nice and since I had meningitis when I was really little I feel like I can really relate to the people who have suffered from it and families who've just been affected by it so I like to do a lot of fundraising in my free time so we recently did well not recently like last year did gung ho where it was like a five kilometer run and with like obstacles in the way and that was before i had an operation on my leg so we thought that we might as well go out with a bang doing a five <laughs> kilometer run might have had some regrets by the end of it because it was like minus 20 degrees yeah, not even joking yeah. it was so muddy and so cold and wet but well we did it for charity anyway fun. so that was good um and then I recently went to Hazelmere and I did I painted the hound. And I know it sounds pretty weird a way to fundraise, but that's kind of why we liked it. And I basically just painted a hound. Um, she was meningitis now as my charity. Oh, and Bionics is my sponsor. They did half the Bionic dog. That's what we called it. Here are the Bionic dog. And it was half robot, half normal dog. And so that was a lot of fun. And all that money goes towards charity too. Could you take us through some of the ways in which you help as a citizen scientist with Open Bionics? Because that doesn't just help them to rejig your hands, as it, as it were. It feeds into the pool of knowledge that will help kids through the generations. Yeah, so Open Bionics are really believe in co-design so they will have they'll obviously make the hands but there's no point them making the hands if they've got no one to test them out so i'm kind of like their guinea pig for their work and i'm also an ambassador for them too so basically what they'll do is they send me hands and i'll test out all the updates and we're trying to get them available worldwide um i believe they're available in france germany america places like that and we're trying to go globally and so we're nearly there. It's not in England yet. You can buy it, but it's not on our NHS in England yet, which is pretty strange. But yeah, they're, they're available so you can buy them for 10 grand each. So I know that sounds like a lot of money, but compared to the hands in the past. Yeah. They used to be £32,000 for a set of hands. And we just couldn't afford to fundraise for that, let alone, you know, buy it outright. So these these are much more affordable <laughs> yeah affordable. and now we have like investors and there's like a charity where people can invest their money into helping other kids who maybe can't afford that after all it's a big price to pay yeah. so i mean it's completely worth it but it's still a lot of money so now we have an investors and they will like donate money to the people who will need them yeah. and now i believe at least 20 people over 20 them. children over 20 children now. very own set of hands bought for them which is amazing and Fantastic. that's all down to Open Bionics and their foundation. And have you met any of those other kids, Tilly? Um, yeah, I have met a couple because there is a couple who are also ambassadors for the company whom I met at launch. There was also this other little girl and she... Um, she was looking into getting a hand. She now has a hand. But she, like, I saw her at the launch and she wasn't really mingling or doing anything. So I decided to go over. We got talking and she was like, oh, yeah, I'm getting my own pair of hands. And then... I let her try my hand on. <laughs> it doesn't really, like, it didn't really fit because obviously everybody's different yeah. shapes and stuff and this, like, socket is made perfectly for me. So it didn't really fit, but um, it was really nice for her. Um, I told her that how we got involved, how when I was designing my own hand, we went in with a, a huge creative, like, vision board and she said she's really creative, so she went home with a smile and she was looking forward to making her own vision board. So I have met a couple in person, but even if it's not in person, I'm connected with a couple of people on social media. Can you tell us a little bit about how your hands have evolved in terms of what, what they can do now as a comparison to when you first put them on? So um, I've been working with all sorts of different 
companies ever since I was two years old. And the first pair of hands I had were literally a claw. There were two fingers and one thumb, like claws like that. We used to call them claws, they were fingers. But then they were tied together by elastic bands. And basically the way it would work is I would have a big harness over my head. And the way I would move my upper body, it would pull on the strings to make these claws close over. And so now we have these. Technology has definitely evolved. And I got these exact ones in January, but I was trialing out all different hands, even though they maybe weren't my own with Open Bionics for like the NHS trials and stuff. And so I've definitely found out a lot more things I could do now because, I mean, practice makes perfect. Every day I'm finding out new things I can do with them with a little bit of patience and perseverance. But yeah, they've definitely changed a lot since mm -hmm. back then. You've met some incredible people over the last few months. Um, out of everybody that you uh, haven't met so far but could, uh, alive or dead, who would you like to meet and what question would you like to ask that person? Well, I kind of feel like I've already done this because I met Dalai Lama um, last year and that was just insane, the amount of people who would literally like die to just be able to sit next to him, be able to speak to him. It's absolutely insane. And I'm so lucky and so blessed that I got to do that. And I actually did ask him a question. We asked him like, what could bigger tech companies be doing to help develop this? And he said, get it to the third world countries. So that's definitely something we're working on. And it's definitely set me on a little quest to be able to get that available for the poorer countries maybe. Yeah. But I feel like, um, there is this person I never got to meet. I think it was in it was in our family or one of my great great grandparents knew him or something like that along those lines. Um, but he back in the olden days, you know, when if somebody needed the hands amputated, they didn't have any anaesthetics. They didn't put you back to to sleep back then, and so they would literally like put you on a table and just kind of stretch it, cut it off yeah <laughs> so I, d I know somebody who actually did that in my family and he had to have it cut off for whatever reason and he actually died on the table but I feel like I, I recently had an operation on my leg where I had a big cage which I found a white feather on and it really made me think because a white feather usually means an angel and I just thought of him straight away for whatever reason I don't know why but I thought of him and I just kind of knew it was him and I just feel like you'd be really proud of how far we've we've come now. And I was, so it would be really great to meet him, probably. Your family have done an incredible amount to support you, to help you on your journey. There have been thousands of celebrities who've also helped. Who would you say is the richest connection that you have made for you to get to this point in your life? You're only 13, but my goodness, <laughs> yeah. you have done an awful lot in a very short number of years. Who do you think has propelled you forward? Well, obviously everybody who did a handprint for me in the beginning for us to actually start the journey with Prosex, I thank them so much. Like Emma Watson, Cheryl Cole, like the Spice Girls, they all did one. And so everybody who's done that, I want to thank you so much because it's made me be able to start the journey and get to where I am today. But the, when I'm older, or even now really, I really want to be a public speaker and Singularity U, a university and like a group of people. And they've made it made me able to speak across the world in Amsterdam with the Dalai Lama in Canada, soon to be in South Africa. So I definitely owe it to them, I feel like, because I want to be a motivational speaker when I'm older. Me being able to get up there and experience what it would be like and watch other people doing the job I want to do when I'm older it's really been amazing for me and they've really set me off in my career path so I really thank Singularity U and everything they've done for me and I guess they'd be the main people who've really helped me propel and get into my career I want to be in. I think what's really inspiring with Tilly is the fact that she could just sit and let others do all the work but she's like no 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 I want to get you know sees the pun but hands on with this and just get stuck in and you know there's no holding back so just like, where can we go next what can we do next and she's up for everything and it's so inspiring not just to the family but to everyone involved i think that's why people keep coming back and wanting to help more so it's you know it's a good job <laughs> tilly locky bionic girl adam locky thank you so much for your time no problem at thank all you. thank you